also going to be setting up a new computer over there so all of this will run more smoothly in the future. So let me introduce myself. My name is Candace Craw Goldman. I'm a quantum healer, been a quantum healer for a decade now, primarily doing the work of Dolores Cannon, but beyond. I run an international support forum and directory for healers of all kinds. You can find quantumhealingpractitioners.com on the internet and it's associated support forum for those who join and list on our directory. And I want to mention that this show, Quantum Healing with Candace, is sponsored by in5d.com and the wonderful Greg Prescott there who uh, runs the hottest and uh, most relevant esoteric spiritual database and news feed um, on the internet. So if you don't know about in5d.com, you need to check them out and go on over there and see what's up um, and get their daily updates. One of my favorite things to do. So this morning, I want to um, tell you all just a little bit about my friend, Allison Co. If you are on YouTube and you are interested in quantum healing of any kind, you already know Allison. <laughs> but it's our newer viewers and some of our Facebook fans who may be on YouTube watching today that I want to talk to about Allison. So Allison's been a quantum healer and been part of our community for quite a while. And, you know, I don't think, I was thinking about you, Allison, as I was driving in. And I was thinking about Dolores Cannon. And I was thinking about, really, even though Dolores has passed and Dolores was in her mid 80s when she did pass, Allison, you remind me of her in a lot of ways, in a lot of beautiful well, ways. And let me tell you how. First off, your heart and your energy precede you, you flow. Um, you are so beautiful on camera and people can see that and they know that and they can feel your heart just like they could feel Dolores's heart. Here's another way you remind me of Dolores. You are so honest and funny. <laughs> Both of those things. <laughs> Dolores had an amazing sense of humor and you have an amazing sense of humor and I love it when you laugh. Here's another way you remind me of Dolores Cannon. You take the information that you receive seriously, you think about it, you compile it, you cross check, and you, um, you, know, you sort of vet the information before you just get on air and begin telling the public. And that was very much Dolores Cannon. And I think a part of her is either in or around you at all times. Welcome to the show, Allison Co. So happy to be talking with you this morning. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Candice. And what an intro. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. I've, I've never, um, I feel honored that you would even put me in the same category as Dolores and, and her personality and her work ethic or, you know, the, the type of work that she brought to the world. Thank you so much. That is, that is amazing. That means the world to me. I, I can't even, I can't even, I, I should get my tissues right now blot the tears away from my eyes. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, well, we'll go to the fun stuff now, but really I was, I was thinking, you know, I know hundreds of quantum healers all across the planet. I've met thousands of you and there are many hundreds in our community, even now. And I was thinking through all the different personalities and I asked myself driving in, who's more like Dolores than you? I mean, and, and I couldn't, there was no immediate answer that came up, you know, and here's a really interesting part for me, you know, Dolores started out, of course, she was a completely different generation. And she started out, heck, she started doing these, recording these sessions with her husband, Johnny, way back in the late 60s, in the early 70s. Did you know she used the big reel-to-reel -reel recorders? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Actually, I remember that in, the, in, in, her, in her class, uh, when I took it in Arkansas, she was, um, she, they, that was mentioned that they used that. I can't even imagine. Did they right? lug it around or did people come to them? I don't know, but. No, no, no. You know what? That was Dolores's job because for those of you who don't know this out there, it was her husband, Johnny, who had the interest in hypnosis. This was his hobby. So Dolores was like the, the pack person. <laughs> she was like, you know, she was, 
it was her job to carry this stuff and set it up. And her husband did this hypnosis for a while. And then of course, you know, uh, all of the things happened in her life to where this became her life's work, um, particularly after her husband's accident and then subsequent passing, uh, she just blossomed and bloomed. But she went through, I was thinking a lot about this technology thing because here, look what we're even doing now. We're we're talking and we're sharing about our quantum healing stories in a brand new way. And Dolores did real to real, and then she wrote books. And for the longest time, that's the way she got her information out. So you and I do this work and I've, I've got a book in my computer, <laughs> but it needs <laughs> editing. And who knows how long it's gonna be before it's gonna be actually published. But we share information this way. You know, the chapters of our stories are shared via the internet. And it's some of that um, moving into the technology that's available to us that, that connects us with people around the world. That's such a wonderful thing, but it is very similar to what Dolores did, capturing people's imagination and thrills um, to the stories and information that come forth through our sessions. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Dolores, Dolores did an amazing job and I'm so glad she put those books out. And I'm so glad that I live in an age where I don't have to. <laughs> like, no, I have no patience for that. Absolutely none. But I, I, re, I am so glad that there are people out there that did and, and really got it out there, disseminated the information, put it on a, on a global scale. And what a prolific author she was, just getting book after book after book out. And, and each one so powerful because this information truly is so powerful that comes out of these sessions. I actually have to go in and re-listen to my sessions over and over again if I think it might, may have had a nugget in it that I could share. And it's amazing how much, how detailed they are and how much you, you forget, you know, even as the observer, you know, as a, as the witness to this stuff, it just passes right through, right through all the time. I'm like, whoa, that was in that session. Whoa, that was in that session. It is amazing how much information is in there. So thank goodness she recorded her sessions. Thank goodness she had the patience to get this information out and to help generations of people blossom like you said blossom into into who they are and what their purpose could be and where they came from and start that healing process and and become the powerful people that they need to be at this time on earth yes. that is truly there's nothing more important than that you My do book. a good job in talking about um you know the difference and so this thing most of us who are in the in you know ascension and what that is for humanity we talk about how fast things are happening and your description right there about how much information how fast it goes by how fast you get the information out by you using this medium we truly are taking this work of quantum healing into a new generation, into a new way. And just because it's funny, I want to share a little story about Dolores and my own session that I had with her. I actually was very blessed. I had a session with her in 2008. And at the time it was in um, her class. I was the demonstration subject in her class. And several weeks went by before I got my recording from Dolores Cannon in the mail, in a bubble mailer, in a brown <laughs> bubble. <laughs> And I opened it up and I was so excited. I, I, I just like you, you know, when just like us, I had the session and I remembered what I thought all of it, right? But of course it sort of tends to, well, I forgot that part. And then there was that really cool part that I didn't really remember. But when I, I tore open that envelope and I couldn't wait to get what she sent me, it was a cassette recorder. I mean, a cassette tape. And I didn't have a cassette recorder. <laughs> I remember I remember sitting in my in my oh. office looking at this and thinking, well, the car I had the year before would have played it, but we had just gotten another car or whatever, and there wasn't even a cassette recorder in my automobile or in my house. I had to go buy a cassette recorder to be able to play and listen to my session. And Dolores Cannon used cassette recorders. 
uh, until she couldn't anymore. And meaning this, she actually had to special order them from what ended up being the last manufacturer of cassette tapes in America. She, she bought them in bulk until they no longer uh, created them anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I, I, no, I think she did this into, I don't know, maybe even 2010. And I remember when she walked into class one day, I was so honored to be able to assist her in her advanced classes. And I remember she walked into class one day and she brought like a, a Sony recorder and she set it down. She goes, well, I guess I can't use my cassettes anymore. <laughs> And you know, what was really fascinating about that was it's how she paced herself. So she used, you know, you older people out there will remember this cassette tapes. Um, there was different sizes. There was a 30 minute on two sides for an hour long tape. And there was a 45 on two sides for a 90 minute tape. Do you know that's how she chose the proper length of a session? Because oh, of the length wow. of the cassette tape. Oh, and wow. she, that's, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> isn't it? And she taught her class. So the first side of the tape is the past life. Hmm. And then flip it over as you ask for, you know, permission to speak to the higher self. While you're doing that, you're flipping your tape. Oh, my God. And then you press <laughs> oh, my God. And that's so, she so funny. Her class for years. Well, that anyway, is fascinating. To our wonderful teacher, whom I consider to be one of my primary guides, even now speaking from beyond the veil. And I know she shows up in your sessions too. Oh man, I wish she would. If she, if she does, she's a silent, she's silent because I, I just don't have that access to that gift of being able to hear uh, things outside of me. I'm not clairaudient. And so that's, I don't get information like that. I so wish I could because I know, well, maybe it's, maybe it's a blessing because I know she'd probably be like harping on me all the time, you know? She is there. Well, I'll, I'll just finish this um, part of our conversation with this thought. Before Dolores ever died and in, in the classes, when we would talk about this, some people who would come to her advanced classes and the, and the um, reunions, et cetera, you know, into the latter part of her life, we would say, Dolores, I had a dream about you, or Dolores, you, you, I heard your voice in my head while I was having a session. And there were a lot of people who were saying this while she was still very much alive. And this really oh. tickled her. She thought that was really interesting. She'd go, well, I guess I'm just, you know, very much a part of what your, your work. And she, she loved that. And for me, so it's for me, hearing her voice started even before she passed. And um, I think it's a little bit of just, you know, all of these things. If you just imagine that you hear her, then you start it and you set it off and it, it becomes uh, a reality in, in your life. But Today, we want to talk about some of your amazing sessions, especially, of course, the thing that you've been talking about, this event that you have had information come through that might be right around the corner here in this brand new year of 2018. For those of our listeners who haven't heard about this before, would you like to tell us a little bit about the information that you've compiled? Well, yeah, actually. Um, so, yeah, there's uh, these sessions are, are started coming through maybe last year for me at the beginning, beginning of 2017, they started coming through where, where people were um, the higher self in client sessions started mentioning that there's going to be a supernatural event, a large event coming to the, to, um, to earth and that uh, it would be coming from the sky and that it was going to change all of the systems on earth. And, and um, you know, being, being a student of them in the metaf metaphysical world for years, I kind of, I kind of, uh, you know, knew this stuff. I knew something like this was going to happen, but to get it in my sessions was like, finally, it was like so freaking validating. It was so amazing. So it wasn't that I was not aware of this stuff. It was just, it was so cool having it finally come through from this kind of higher perspective. Yes, there's a big wave coming to the earth. 
it's on its way. It will change everything on earth. It will raise the vibration of every species on earth and the planet itself. Um, it's to prepare us for ascension. There will be waves of uh, people leaving and going to a new earth, but um, this event is to prepare them for that. Some people won't need much preparation because they're right on the, on the, the edge of being able to just go when this wave happens. And so just getting more and more details about what this energy is like, um, when it will hit earth, what people will experience when it, when it does happen, what the earth will go through when it does happen. So not just the people, but what the earth will go through. Um, it has been, it has made this year just fly by <laughs> because it's not work. You know, as, as you may know, there's a lot of work that goes into these sessions. But when you get information like this, it's not work. It doesn't feel like work. It's, it, it makes it so much fun. It makes life so entertaining. And so, yeah, uh, th this has been a lot of fun. And then, you, as you know, because you, you do this work, you probably get um, this is how the information comes in. So I'm asking the higher self, like the higher self is bringing something up. Oh, yeah, there's a, you know, there's going to be the event and she's going to witness it. I'm like, okay, when? <laughs> when is it going to happen? And they're like, soon. I'm like, okay, soon, you know, to a higher perspective who is outside of time, that could be like a hundred years. So, okay. So I have to like narrow it down. I'm like, okay, will she still be alive? <laughs> you know, Is this person still going to be alive when it happens? Yes. Okay. Do you see it within five years or after five years? Within five years. Okay. Do you see it within three years? Within three years. Do you see it within one year? Within one year. Do you see it within six months? Yes. We see it within six months. Do you see it within three months? More than likely within three months. And so that's how I get these timelines. It's not that they just all of a sudden like are out with it. I have to really try and get more and more and more and more information coming out of these sessions. And so it's, it's really fun. And sometimes I don't get any information. And sometimes the information's like, you know, um, oh, it's nine months away when, when like five other sessions were like, oh no, it's happening in three months or it's happening at the, you know, the first quarter of 2018. So definitely there is some variety in there, but the, the vast majority are all saying this, this quarter of 2018. Now, I always put this out there. This is not, not my information. This is not me. I am a, I'm a Virgo. I am like, I keep one foot on the ground. I am actually a double Virgo. So that means I'm extra grounded in this, in this, you know, in, with logic and analysis and stuff. And it's like, man, <laughs> if you're getting this information, you don't have to believe everything you hear, but I am fascinated by it and I love it. And I like to report on it. So, you know, to me, if it's like, if it happens in, in three months, you know, yeah, because this is the beginning of 2018, if it happens in three months, great. If it doesn't, hey, I don't care because I know what's happening. I know it's coming. It is coming, you know, but the fact is all of these sessions are actually, all of my sessions are actually saying the first quarter of 2018 with a few that aren't, but that's okay when we're, when we're taking the majority. Now, what this feels like when it happens is, is really cool because everybody kind of explains it the same way in, in my sessions. I don't know if they're explaining it like this in your sessions. You can, the, like, that's why this dialogue will be fun. Um, so they're all like, okay, she's going to feel it before she sees it. It's going to be crackling in her body. This energy is going to be like static crackling in her body and she's going to know something is coming. Uh, or he, and, um, and then she's going to see light coming in. And some people describe it as like a um, multicolored smoke, like seeing like this fog of light coming in and saturating the earth and, uh, and seeing it, seeing it um, like miles high, you know, above the ground, like just this wall of multicolored smoke, you know, yeah, that's going to freak people out. <laughs> Even though I know this stuff, it's going to freak me out. I'll be like, oh, God, oh, my God. But yeah, you're going to feel this kind of crackling energy, like something is going to hit you. And then, um, and then it also said that people are going to be kind of out of it for a while. 
they're going to be really out of it. And that, and when they say a while, I tried to get a time for that. I'm like, you know, are you talking like a week? Are you talking, you know, an hour? What do you, and it's going to be different for people, but it, w- it won't be too, it won't be too long. It won't be like a week. It'll be like a day or something where they're just kind of like laying there, like l- allowing this energy to like move through them and saturate them and make the changes it needs to, to make. Now, this is what's interesting when we talk about the event and a lot of people are like, there's going to be a cataclysm or there's, you know, we need to be in survival mode. This is, this is what, this is where I like to kind of use, use logic. Okay. So the event is there to, to raise, raise the vibration of, of every individual on earth. So people who are already have a very high vibration, they will have an even higher vibration. And then people who are kind of a low vibration will go up to this, to this higher vibration where, they, where some of us are at. And I, I include myself in that. So, so imagine your awakening process, your spiritual awakening process. And how it was, for me, it was like, okay, I'm kind of awake and I, and I know things. I, I have this clarity about the universe and how it runs and how there's energy moving through all people and, and all of this amazing awakening stuff. And it became really hard to go to work. <laughs> it became really hard to want to cook dinner. It became really hard to like do the basic stuff. Imagine that on a grand scale where people are just like, suddenly awake and they don't what they don't they can't go to work they can't they don't want to drive they don't want to do their jobs and everything so so logistically speaking things kind of stop running and it's people who are already awake who 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 need to help those who need to who need to say yes this is this is what i went through this is normal expect this you can expect this we kind of are laying the groundwork and that's why so many healers are here right now awake they're ready they're chomping at the bit they're like what do i do what do i do i'm here i know all this stuff i'm fully awake i've done all my healing i've done all my work i've released all this stuff that was holding me back i've cleared all my blocks i'm here i'm ready i'm it's go and, and there's nothing for them to do except for be a lot of the time and wait, be patient, wait and send out more love and send out more love. Oh my God, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so over it. But no, they, they really, we really need them here right now because there are going to be a massive amount of people who need them, who need, to hold, who need their hand held and need to be shown that this is the process of, uh, this, this is the next rung on the spiritual ladder. And then you can expect this rung on the spiritual ladder and then climb up to this. And I'm not saying it's going to be exactly what we went through with our awakening, but it, it will definitely be very similar, I think. And so when you talk about the, this, this event and the effects that it'll have on our systems, systems will will break that aren't based on truth and love and um and sustainability for the earth and its people systems will crumble we know that they're they're all they're all basically trying to crumble right now but also the <laughs> also people who people that are required to make these systems work they won't be wanting to go to work so you know you you won't even have a workforce there and so I don't, I don't want to spread fear. I'm just using like the logic of it all. You know, we are going to need, like people are going to need a little extra water. They might need a little extra food on hand. They might need a couple things just to kind of make this transition a little smoother. So that's the information I have. Of course, there's much more than that, but, but that's what we can expect. And then, uh, or at least through my sessions, that's what I get. And then this, uh, it, this event is like preparing us for, for this ascension to actually leave, to go to these higher dimensions. All fascinating. I, I, it's so intriguing. Every time I get information, it's so intriguing. Does that tie into some of the stuff that you get in your sessions? You know, I love talking this stuff so much, so, so much. So I've been doing this a long time, 10 years now. And some of this is Uh, I can reach back and think there were some clients who were saying things like this 10 years ago, using some of the same phraseology, you know, soon, like you said, 
And, and when I, you know, I like your persistence, you know, Dolores had that too. There, uh, there we go again, where I'm going to compare you to her. You're very <laughs> persistent <laughs> and trying to, na- you know, nail some things down. Um, I've heard so many different varieties of it. And at this point, what I'd like to simply say is, you know, I think you're getting a preponderance of clients who cluster around this subject matter. And those of us who do this quantum healing work, we sort of see this happen, meaning, you know, there may be a person in, you know, Ohio who gets all kinds of ET sessions, you know, people who've been experiencers or et cetera, et cetera, you might get a whole bunch of people because you know you're, you, it, it's magnetic, the frequencies and the attraction between you as a practitioner, their information comes to you, right? I get a lot of people who do, yes, life, life path, uh, but I get a lot of people who show up at my door and, and on my computer when I do sessions via Zoom like this, who have health issues, you know, big, big focus on health issues. And there are some people who get people to do sessions with that rarely, if ever bring health issues, it's really interesting how this works. So one of the ways I was excited about talking with you today was because of how many sessions you've had like that. Have I had some? Yes. Have they been that specific? Occasionally, but for, you know, this is something that wasn't in my sessions, meaning I couldn't sit down and and write in the last year, you know, that there were 10 or 12 people who had this kind of information. I I could not, there may, there may have been several, but not as I don't think as much as you know, you have. And I think it's because of that attraction. Right. And, um, and, but I want to ask you this part of that, you did such a great job in describing what it might look like what it might feel like with the light and the buzzing so many of us now i'm I'm wondering as you're describing this many of us now when we when we feel ourselves in the presence of great truth or or great um grace we feel an internal buzzing inside as a matter of fact me just saying that has started it in my body right back and it and you one could call it a crackling inside of us what do you think? Do you think some of us are getting like echoes or hints of that with this, with these body sensations? Oh my God. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because we, so many of us are prepared are already holding this energy inside of us. So it it only makes sense that, that we can start feeling this kind of lightening of our, our vibration, this raising of the vibration, this crackling, that, make, that makes all kinds of sense. We are attracting this energy to, to, the, uh, to the earth. We are a part of that. And so just like, just like the fact, like you said, magnetic, you know, I'm getting a preponderance of these new earth kind of uh, supernatural event um, sessions. And, and that's really cool. I didn't realize that, um, that, that, that that's happening, this kind of trend that I get more of these, you get more of the health ones. And that makes sense because that's your background. That was like the big shift in your life, right? Was that he- massive healing after your session and during your session. And so mine, mine was this new earth stuff. I, um, that was my introduction to Dolores because I got the information about a, a new earth that we were going to a new earth. I got that information before I ever heard about Dolores. It, beca- it was just all of a sudden I knew it. I knew it. I woke up. I knew it one day. And I was an accountant at the time. So I'm like accounting. Do, 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 do. And all of a sudden I know this. I know this idea. I know it like a truth. Anyway, so that's that does make sense that that's why I'm getting all these sessions. And that's really cool. Yes, people come to me if you, <laughs> you want to know about this stuff. No, um, but the the uh, it does make sense that we're holding, we are holding this tone, this vibration in ourselves, and that's what's attracting it to the earth. So yes, absolutely. And that's really cool that you, you feel that in your body. I get it more in, in meditations, but I, you know, I also get my, my ears are starting to pop more and more regularly. I'll, I'll be standing next to my husband. And I'll be like, do you, did you feel, did you, do you feel that? Like, did your ears just pop? He'll be like, what are you doing? You're looking out in the space. I'm like, because there's something going on in my ears. 
right now and I'm trying to figure it out. And he's, he's like, what in the world is going on with you? I'm like, you don't feel it, you don't hear it. So I don't know if that happens to you. I don't know if that happens to anybody who's listening, but there are, there are changes going on, micro changes that are going on in our bodies as the, the tendrils of this energy wave are, are here on earth right now. The, the bulk of the energy hasn't arrived yet, but I think we're, we're, the tendrils, just the tendrils are absolutely changing us as we speak. They're changing the earth. And that's why we see such a polarity going on on the earth right now. It's like, we are already polarized, but there is no, <laughs> there's no middle. You can't be in the middle anymore. The yeah. middle doesn't exist. You're either over yeah. here or you're over here. And so I think, it, I think it's fascinating what's going on. If we can, if we can keep ourselves at this higher perspective and view the earth and all the changes that are going on from this higher perspective, it's so fun. But anytime we drop down into the, to the, daily grind and the daily struggle and the slog man it's tough it is tough going right now so yeah (laughs) yeah. i'm I'm now currently imagining you um in the year of 2018 when uh, april 15th rolls around you know what april 15th is besides uh tax day it's dolores cannon's birthday holy i didn't know that wow that interesting (laughs) yeah so Here's some of the thoughts I've had while you were while you were talking. First, just the last things I was saying about the the truth or the grace or the understanding, um, you know, getting these these vibrations in my own body. It very much matches the word you've used several times today, crackling. And here's what I really know too: when it's profound, big, big truth, I. It comes, it starts in my legs and it comes up my body like this and it comes up, it's like a toroidal thing. You know how the toroidal field goes like this. And even as I'm saying that, um, it's it, it, that is starting it up again in my body. And I always know it's really big and really profound information when it spills over out of my crown, goes down across my face and I can actually feel the crackling in my cheekbones. Oh. And I don't, get that all that often but while you were talking and I was talking about standing in profound truth and is that some of the same thing and you were agreeing that we were already feeling some of this my face was just going oh my god I want what what you have holy crap (laughs) I don't know maybe it's like messing up my skin and give me wrinkles I don't know but no it's an amazing feeling and Oh, I have to tell you this little story. I have absolutely no idea if this is related to what we're talking about, but my intuition is bringing it up. So maybe it is. I actually only told, <clears throat> told my family this just the, a day or so ago, you know, it's, we're coming out of the holiday season and we decided to leave some of those little beautiful little white sparkling lights um, wrapped around a banister and down into our basement, kind of a night light, you know, a nice little thing that just sort of lights up the basement. So you don't have to turn on the overhead light, but because they're pretty bright, I unplug them at night and I'm always the first one to rise in the morning. I always rise before dark, always. And I love watching the sun come up. And that's my time of day is, is, is before the sun ever rises. And so I get up and the first thing that I do is I go over to the, the electrical outlet and I put the plug in um, and then it sort of lights up nicely for me to continue moving throughout the house without falling over a cat or something. But the most interesting thing happened just a little while ago. In the dark, I can find it right away because it's on a tiny little wall that's just, you know, four inches thick and it's right down in the corner by a half wall. So I just go straight there and I just plug that sucker in. So I went over there the other day and I picked it up and I'm holding the plug and I hadn't plugged it in yet. The lights blinked on. What? (laughs) Right? I mean, it was very brief, but I'm like, and you know, once again, I'm like, I wish someone would have been here to see that. What the heck? I mean, I've had this thing with electronics forever and ever. I mean, ask my family. It used to be like a joke, but it's no joke. You know, stuff burns up all the time. I'm not allowed to touch light bulbs, that kind of thing. Yeah, my cousin's like that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And I wonder if these two things 
our our related actual crackling electricity you know am i actually am i going to be able to like hold on to my computer and like charge it up just by holding on to the plug here baby you no. need some take it from me you are going to burn that computer out don't even try that don't even try that. you are going to just burn that whole computer to bits man. <laughs> try it on somebody um, else's computer first not yours <laughs> I've got three in this room right now because of all of the different issues going on. And then, yeah, I, 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 sometimes I take a computer and I hand it to my husband. I'm like, please reset this. Yeah. Oh, hold it for a little bit. Oh, I have clients show up, Candice, who I, I may not know this right away when they, I mean, we haven't, we haven't introduced each other. We haven't like heard, I haven't heard their story yet or anything. And within, I, I always check because I'm, I, I don't carry a watch or anything. I'm always checking the time on my phone. So, you know, after a little while, I'll check the time on my phone just to make sure we're on track. We get into our session on time and my phone will be almost dead. And it's just because it's just because certain, certain people suck the life out of, out of batteries. That's, and it's not one, one client was like, does that mean I'm like an energy vampire? I was like, no, that just means you're like super highly electrically charged that's what that means. It's, it has nothing. You're not stealing energy from, from people. You're stealing it from, you're stealing it from our electronics back up. No, I'm just like, but it, but it's amazing that some people just have this ability and, and, you know, I, I, I see everything as having a, a blessing side and a curse side, you know, every, everything has that ability. So what, what I wonder is the gift part of that. I haven't had anybody ask that question in a session and nor, nor have I asked it in my own sessions because it's not, it's not something that really affects me. But wouldn't that be fascinating to find that out? What does this mean? What, how, how can it be used in a good way? Or what, you know, what is the blessing half of this, uh, half of this um, ability to, to be so electrically charged? Oh man, there's so many untapped areas. One of these clients that showed up Oh, sorry. One of these clients that showed up to ask this stuff, or she, she was, she was one of the ones that were, was draining my battery. She, <laughs> you'll like this. She arrived at a session. I love this. I love this woman. So, so this, uh, please, if you're hearing this, don't think I'm complaining. This was just really funny. She arrived at a session with 16 pages of typed questions. 16. We, we're like talking to your higher self for maybe an hour. Like, you know, there, there's not a huge amount of time. We got to, we got to a page and a half of her questions. Now, 16 pages, that was like 14 pages of fascinating questions about the universe and about every topic, like completely, completely well-rounded in all her curiosities. I, I couldn't wait to hear all the answers, but the higher self, what did they decide to focus on? Because, you know, they're, they, they're going to focus on something. You can't, you can't steer them away. They wouldn't give her any answers to her curiosities until they focused on her healing, her actual healing of her, her emotions and her body, because they were all the time. That is primary. That is primary in these sessions. You cannot be of benefit to your fellow man and to this earth until you've dealt with your stuff and and start start healing your own body and so it was really funny uh, after the session i was like i'm so sorry you're gonna you're just gonna have to come back and back and back to get these answers and she's like i get it that's okay i get why they focused on this stuff i get it and that that is always how these sessions go but so we couldn't get to like the you know, why does she suck the life out of batteries? Nope. She had to, we had to get to, you know, the, the healing part, you know, healing her as an individual. And that anytime like somebody has this desire to heal the earth and raise the vibration of the earth, I think, I think it, this is really cool. Anytime someone has that desire to be of use to the universe and the earth and to raise the vibration, it always begins with themselves. It's always an inside job first. They have to fix themselves. They have to raise their vibration. They, have, they are integral to doing that work. Their own healing 
is always primary to them being of, being able to be of service to others and to the earth. I think that is so beautiful, so beautiful. We are so tied together. We are so tied together with the health of this earth. The health of this earth is tied together with the health of our, our emotional state. And I think, I think so many people don't know that. They want to look outside of themselves and say, what can I do? What can I do? And it's like, no, you have to look right inside you and say, what can I do? Okay, this is going on. This is going on. Get rid of that. That's not serving me anymore. You know, get rid of the mom stuff. Get rid of the dad stuff. Get rid of it all. Throw it out. Get, get it out. And that's, you know, it's easier said than done some of the times. And then some of the times it's not. Some of the times it's so simple because we get information about like rewriting our timelines and stuff. Yes, I oh. want to talk about that too. And actually, you know, this is a great time to bring that up because what do you think of this idea? Because I definitely want to talk about this timeline portion of it. But how do you think it might be connected with this idea of what might be the different ways that people might be experiencing this event that may be coming sooner or later. Do you think, because look at, look at the work we do, you know, shifting the timelines and different versions and the Mandela effect and, and how things are, you know, this way or this way. And that wonderful video, I don't know the title of it, but definitely plug the video that, that, you, that you did recently about going back into your own timeline. Yeah. And I love so much you were giggling at yourself you're like I'm not going to tell you what I did but I was oh Allison you could have made a better <laughs> choice I was in on the floor laughing uh, uh just because of your wonderful humor because why because every one of us can see that uh, our own story in our own place where we might have made a better decision for whatever reason and you talked about shifting that timeline but I wonder and, and I want you to talk about that but how about also talk about it in regards to could it be that there are different versions of experiences of this event coming up that align on different timelines? Meaning the person who, okay, I'm buzzing. So see, to me, that means, yeah, probably, right? So there, there are gonna be this whole swath of people that see the colors and the light and really feel the crackling. There's gonna be maybe another swath of people who just kind of don't know what happened because they kind of can't see it. It's like it's like a dog whistle being blown by their ear. It's the frequency is so high that they aren't aware of it. They just are aware of the after effects. Are there different versions or just different perceptions of the same event, meaning different timeline versions? What do you think? Well, I think uh, I think that's a great question. And I think um, I think our perception does create the versions. So I think perception every everything exists in our in our mind the only, you know everything does our rea our reality and the way we experience it all exists from the inside and then we we see and that they're finding that in quantum physics as well uh, just the measurement the measurements control the actual the actual results it's so it's so crazy it's like a backwards effect and so when you talk about different versions of this timeline, yes, it, it makes sense that it's just it's just us and our perception of it. And so I'm getting information that may be completely unique to that individual and what they're going to experience. And that's why it's so it may be so different from the next person. But when they when they when they all line up, um, like the, it's the experience in a lot of my sessions where the they're all saying the same thing then maybe that maybe that means that they're all of the same vibration or I, I don't know it, it is fascinating but I believe I believe your um your uh your you're on to something because we we're all living in such a different reality than someone else I mean I I'm you're in a marriage I'm in a marriage our lives are totally different what we experience you know when we we live together we you know we we see each other we know the same people all this stuff but 
our lives, we don't experience the same thing. And that's with someone who's right next to us. So someone who's halfway across the world, who may be, you know, on a, on a completely different vibration with us because, than us because they've experienced, you know, so much struggle, so much strife, so much, you know, war and, um, and poverty, extreme poverty, extreme war, malnourishment, all this stuff, they will experience something totally different than what you and I may experience. So it, it, it's yet to be seen. That's the cool thing. It's yet to be seen. It's going to be, I, I feel like we're in the greatest time on earth. Now, how do timelines and re, so how is it that time, our timelines and redoing our timelines, how does that affect? I have no idea yet, This, but it's so cool to ask. And I need, I need people to show up at my sessions and ask this stuff <laughs> because I, can, I don't have the luxury of having a practitioner right next to me who I can go in and have these sessions with. No, this is not, this is not my stuff. And I don't hijack people's sessions. I need them to actually <laughs> ask them on their own and come in and ask, ask these questions. Cause it, there are so, the more we find out, the more, the more questions there are about that subject, Just peeling back the layers of this, of, of knowledge basically. So yeah, the timeline stuff is, is really cool. That, um, that came through sessions about, about, you know, this, this client being able to recreate a timeline where a, a certain traumatic event didn't exist because um, basically she was experiencing pain in her body um, years after a traumatic event. And the, the higher self said that's actually associated with the memory of that event. The body has healed itself, but every time she remembers the event, the pain comes back into her body and what we would like her to do is remember the event differently. Put anything else in its place. Take it, take, take your imagination, fill it in, write, write a slip of paper and you know, I wish this happened and put that in the slot, that time slot and imagine that happening. And they were like, it will completely change her timeline and it will erase the pain. And that is amazing. It was so intriguing, that piece of information. And that's what I was talking about in this video is how I, I immediately went into um, something that was affecting me and, uh, and yeah, totally, totally not something I am sharing because yeah, it's embarrassing. I'm not going to share my embarrassing, like lamest moments of my life <laughs> with everybody but we all have them. And I was like, yeah, that didn't just happen. That didn't just happen. It happened this way. And it completely changed my perception of myself, that shame, that guilt. I wasn't carrying that with anymore. And that's where all change happens yeah. is in your mind, your perception of it. That's where everything changes always on the inside before on the outside always vibrational before it manifests in the physical, always quantum before it's, you know, bigger, micro before macro. So really interesting stuff. And I'd like, and I've heard now, like um, the comments uh, after that video were like, people were like, I try it, I've tried it and um, it works amazing. Or, or other people have been teaching this for years and it works amazing. So it, it exists and it's, it's a doable. And then quantum physics, I stumbled across this article um, about it through, um, I don't know, through the internet, of course, and uh, it was called "Retro Causality: How to Change the How to Change the Present in the Past." So rewriting the past to change the present, and it was say, it was talking about the same stuff: how time time is linear. And uh, well, that's the basic understanding is time is linear and, and we see it as an arrow just going forward. Past occurs before present and then present occurs before future. And causality is um, cause and effect. And so what happens in the past affects the future. That's our basic understanding on a human level of time. And what, they're, what quantum physics is saying, or this is a theory that we, that causality can occur in both directions, like a double-sided arrow. So it can affect the past. Our present can affect the past, not just the future. And so this, this was so in sync with that information coming out. What she does in the present can affect the past and therefore change the future. 
So we have this beautiful tool now where we can change the future. We can change what we experience. We can change our thoughts about maybe a cataclysm and apocalyptic event to something that's beautiful and beneficial to everybody. And it's like <laughs> seeing jewel colored light in the sky and feeling this amazing like orgasmic tingling, I don't know. And instead of like, hey, some, some earthquake or something, <laughs> who wants that? I don't want that, that's not, that's not <laughs> something I want. So I think, you know, this idea of changing our life as we go it, and, and, um, and the basic law of manifestation, you know, the basic law of attraction, whatever we focus on chain, you know, we attract. And so why not focus on something really amazing? We still have an effect. We still have an effect on what we will um, actually witness. So man, let's get to work. Let's visualize, let's create. I think, I think it's so, this is the most powerful time in our lives most powerful really Dolores used to say oh look I'll have to get it you're reminding me of Dolores again so here's a bookmark that used to go out with her books I actually I don't know if you've seen this oh yes yeah absolutely yeah so my beautiful beautiful Dolores yeah and on the back are some of some of her books I, I'm sure that this is not included in any of the books anymore but I still have a few hanging around you know as you were talking about this changing of the timelines you know for most of our audience are already on board with all of this but if there's some skeptics out there some brand new people who are wondering how is this possible if the past is already completed how in the world can you change it? Well, I want to bring up something uh, very basic and very physical, which is the neural pathways in your mind, right? So the neural pathways in your mind are kind of the way your brain fires whenever you're thinking about something. So if you are trying to, let's say, break a habit, or if you are trying to, you know, so many of us, we worry on something, right? We think about it, especially things that bother us. We, we think about it, we think about it, we think about it, we replay it, we replay it, we replay it. If it's painful, guess what that literally does in your mind? It's like walking the same path, you know, in your yard over and over and over again. It gets ingrained in the ground and it becomes very visible and very real and deep and all of that. And so some of what Allison was talking about is, uh, you know, filling in these neural pathways in your yard or your brain with like dirt and kind of neutralizing them that way and thinking about another path. And then it really does change things because that's where the pain exists is in those neural pathways in your rep, you know, repetition of these traumatic or painful events in your past. And then when things change and when you can look at things in a different perspective, and I bet Allison can speak to this, I know I've done some things similar, when you try or when somebody who is associated with a traumatic event wants to talk to you about it, you might find that you just really don't remember the details very much anymore. And they, because they maybe they never did anything like this, and maybe they've ingrained it in their neural pathways. Are you kidding? I remember this, 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 and this. And they may look at you incredulous, like, how could you ever forget this part and that part and this part? It's because, you know, you neutralize that in your brain and you decided to look at it from a different perspective. And you probably are a little happier about it if it was a crummy thing that brought up things like pain and shame. So there's, there's actually science that backs all of this up that isn't even as far out as quantum mechanics, which, you know, entanglement and all of that is, is true and, and all of that. And, energy and frequency before even the cause of something, but, uh, but very physical things, the neural pathways in your brain um, are part of what we're talking about here. And what we're talking about here too then is of course the spiritual and science part of all of humans finally coming together in a way where they're, it's beginning to talk to each other for the benefit of all of us. Absolutely, I think that was beautifully said. Very well done. Yeah, we and so we have the we have this amazing ability if we're not, you know, just lazing around, you know, wallowing in our in our own guilt, our own shame, our own pain. We have this am amazing ability to start actively healing ourselves without going to anybody else. Without, you know, without going and seeing seeing well, 
okay, I'll, I'll get a lot of, I'll get a lot of, I'm going to get a lot of guests for that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to shut up about that one. <laughs> Basically, you can do a lot on your own yes, and you might as well start and you should start, start small. You know, yeah. if you start big, you're going to be like, see, that doesn't work. And it's like, yeah, because you, you gave, you gave yourself some huge issue to try and rewrite. Start, start small. One day on my way to work, <laughs> when I was an accountant and I had a, had a commute, it was, it was super icy out. And um, I was on the freeway and a semi stopped. We were all going super slow, but a semi stopped right in front of me. And my brakes took a while and it was all. <clears throat> and I was like, I just hit the semi. And then I was like, nope, that didn't just happen. That didn't just happen. And I, and I remember telling myself, like, that didn't just happen. I'm just going to work. Screw it. And so I just, I went to work and I, and I never even thought about it again. Never occurred to me that I had hit a semi that morning. There was no wow. damage. Obviously we were going super slow. And, but I was like, think. anyway, so then, <laughs> then like a couple weeks later, my husband's like, what did you do to the car? And I'm like, what are you uh -oh. <laughs> what are you talking about and he's like there's this little yeah, anyway he said he found this little bit of damage on the car it was super tiny and it took me a while to remember what happened I was like I didn't tell him <laughs> well you know you didn't want to you didn't want to make that neural pathway any deeper in your brain you were already filling it in yeah, I had already stuck to my new timeline. So I wasn't about to go back and create another one where that actually did happen. Nope, it didn't just happen. <laughs> so, yeah. great a lot story. of denial. <laughs> That's a great story. I also wondered, do you remember what you were thinking about other than I need to stop before that semi comes up on me? Do you remember like what some, I find these things, uh, these questions fascinating when, um, when I'm talking to people in my own sessions about um, injuries or onset of illness or whatever. Here's a small example. I'll never forget this one. I had a, a man come see me and he had broken his hand in a motorcycle accident like two years prior. And he just couldn't, he couldn't get the hand. It just wasn't healing. It wasn't healing. And so I was asking him about the accident. I said, well, let's talk about the accident. He says, well, it just really wasn't anything. I was just going off, you know, off this exit ramp. And I just kind of lost it and I hit the ground. Well, some people might stop there, but I asked more questions and it ended up being exactly what we needed to know. I said, well, you know, where were you going? What were you doing? What, you know, what were you on your way to do? That's, that's what it was. Um, he came from a very religious, uh, I believe it was either Amish or Quaker, but I believe it was Amish family, big family, lots of siblings. He was the only one who left the religion, you know, became an outsider. He was on his motorcycle on his way to his sister's wedding when he lost it and, um, and the hand thing happened. And it was, you know, on the, the right hand side, which is current life. And it's also, you know, the, the male side. And, and there was just so many uh, connections to what was going on and why it wasn't going to heal. And I will never, ever, ever forget that man's face as he's looking at me and I'm talking about, I think this is happening and that hasn't healed because this isn't about your hand at all. It's about your family, it's about your sister, it's about all of that. And then, you know, that gave what it is that we were even talking about before, a new perspective. Let's look at this issue from a completely different viewpoint and then you get a fresh perspective and then you can maybe shift this. And you know, to him, and because of the way we were raised, he's, you know, well, there, there is, it's a random thing. I'm on my motorcycle, I randomly just slipped, lost my, you know, my path, my footing, whatever, and broke my hand and it was just random. It doesn't mean anything. Oh my gosh, there's nothing more far from the truth. When anything happens to you, I don't care if you're breaking a hand, stubbing a toe, or winning the lottery, or whatever it is, it, it, it's, it's not random. It's never random. It has to do with how the universe is reflecting what's going on that you're sending out. You're sending it out as a signal, as a frequency, either because it's something you desire and are wanting to manifest, 
or it's something you're worrying on and what, you know, and you're focusing on how you don't want it. If you focus way too hard on something you don't want, you're only going to get more of it. And this inner beingness is the thing that happens first. And then the thing happens with, you know, the hand or, or the hitting the semi or the anything. So, uh, do you know what were you thinking about when you tapped that big old truck on the highway? Were you thinking about work? <laughs> and well, going to yeah, probably because I didn't I didn't like going into work and I was at all and uh, and it was icy and I was like it's icy it's icy it's icy icy oh so yeah <laughs> yeah it, I totally I totally attracted that yeah. <laughs> no so doubt about it about that, though, you know. You know, you're, you know, there's, here's a one, you know, you're sliding on what, you know, what is even ice? It's, it's water. What's water? It's liquid consciousness. And you're just, and you know, and you hit this big thing that wasn't going anywhere. Maybe that big thing that wasn't going anywhere was, you know, your accountant's job. And you're like, I don't want that anymore. I don't yeah. want that anymore. And you began that little thing. And I bet it brought a lot of adrenaline to your body because I don't care how <laughs> you tap a semi if you tap a semi on a highway you're gonna feel it in here <laughs> yeah. right I, mean, I, had to, I think I had to change my deodorant pretty bad after that one <laughs> so uh, you know I bet and tell me what tell me what you think I bet you switched the timeline when you when you tapped that truck man if I was if I wish I was conscious about timelines back then I really do I really wish, I, I mean, I was totally aware. I was awake and aware and I was conscious and I was in, in you know, a spiritual being, absolutely. But I just wasn't aware like, oh, I could have just switched a timeline. Yeah, that would be fun to go back and find out. And there are many times where I think I probably did, but you know, like th things where I'm just like, that, my life was completely different after this one event, after this one event, because I made this choice my life was completely different. Thank God, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, timelines are fascinating. Just for you all to, to know, when you have a session, when you have a quantum healing session, that is a huge place where you're, you will be a different person. I actually use a computer analogy with my own clients. I'm like, you know, you're fill in the name version 2.0 when you leave here or when we hang up the Zoom connection. You are a different person. Just realize that. Now start acting like it and don't go back to the old neural pathways, right? I mean, it's, it's an opportunity, but in truth, everything's an opportunity. Do you know what I even do, Allison, for some of my clients who come here in person? I make them go outside and I make them like either walk around the car on the opposite direction or start doing things just a little differently, like all kinds of things a little differently. Like if they're wearing a watch, put that on your other hand or whatever. It's like a constant daily thing of you are now a different person and if you can remember that and keep that in the forefront of your mind then you help uh, manifest and seal in those changes which is why when we took our class from Dolores you know she said listen to your session even if you think you remember it or think you got that information listen to it because it reinforces some of the healing that you might have gotten in your session yeah, that's hugely powerful. Hugely. I still listen to all of mine and I listen to <laughs> I listen to my client sessions even. And it, yeah. it is so impactful to to keep listening because you hear something different each time also. And something that you didn't think was valid or didn't think was as powerful as it was. Well, and then well, then maybe in one week it becomes hugely important and you forget you don't pay attention to anything else but that one thing. And then a couple of weeks later, the same thing happens with some other piece of information. So yes, that that recording is so important. So important. It's it's like doing the homework. You know, you go, you take your class, but you actually have to do the homework to to, you know, get these, get these, like you said, these pathways set. Get your, get your new information integrated into your life. You actually have to like listen to your session. Yeah. Yeah, I find that absolutely, absolutely important. Speaking of that, I, I, I have to mention this and we've already been talking for more than an hour. So we're moving towards oh. winding, winding up our time together. But I want to mention uh, to those of you who are listening, you know, we, we have another video right here on the Quantum Healing and Beyond um, YouTube channel with, um, with Allison and Lauren, um, Lauren Hansen of, um, in, from, uh, I'm always forgetting which Carolina she is, I think South Carolina. 
anyway. Oh, I was gonna say I was gonna say North, but I can't remember either. It was <laughs> one, of the, one of the beautiful Carolinas, and I used to live in North Carolina, so I love you people out there. Uh, but I don't really remember now which which one. But anyway, we did a show together, and where we the three of us gals were talking, and we kind of debriefed the session before, and then then the session is actually online. You get to listen to Lauren being regressed by Allison. And there's some amazing pieces of information in there. And then we talk about it a little bit at, at the conclusion. But here's what I want to mention about that. You all can go listen to that right now. It's kind of lengthy, but it's, it's so great. My life has not been the same since I listened to that session. My life has not been the same. And it, so much has to do with that light language. And that light language has shown up as a gift in my life. <clears throat> and it's one that I'm still exploring. It's still a very new gift. And I'm using it in my own quantum healing sessions, not Ooh. always but when it comes up. So what I want to tell you, people who are listening out there, even if you haven't had your own session, there are some things that you can do and you can be kind of activated by listening to other sessions, including the one that uh, Lauren and um, Allison did together several months ago. So go check that one out. Yeah. And Alba sessions too, you know, Alba Weinman, she posts her sessions on there and um, people are always asking me if I listen to them and it's like, no, because I do this for a living. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I, you're like, when I'm not, when I'm not working, I generally don't go listen to other practitioner sessions, but it's so powerful. I think everybody should go and listen to those sessions. Absolutely. You are, you are spot on. The stuff that it activates something in you. Yeah if you can. And practitioner on practitioner sessions are just so much fun. And I think that's going to lead me to a really great place to talk about that right now. I want to want to tell you people out there, people who are quantum healers already, and those who want to be and first off, what's a quantum healer? Well, anyone really, who's interested in helping another being a service to others practitioner, you could be Reiki, you could be a life coach, you could be a massage therapist, you could be a yoga teacher, you could be an intuitive, you could be a medium, you could be all kinds of things. Um, that makes you a quantum healer in our book. And if you are a quantum healer, you are invited to join our community and our directory at quantumhealingpractitioners.com. And what's even more fun than that, if you're just thinking you might want to be a quantum healer, hey, guess what? We are offering a program right now, a beta testing program of a modality slash concept we're calling Beyond Quantum Healing. And it's being created right now with a large number of people who are interested in watching and giving feedback on the creation that's happening in our community. And what makes me very excited about this is it's perfect even for people who've been wanting to get into this kind of work, maybe didn't know where to start, maybe don't know a whole lot. Maybe they've been interested in taking Dolores Cannon's class, um, you know, the online one, but maybe that they haven't been able to uh, fit that in their budget or their time. You can come join us and uh, check out our uh, beta testing of beyondquantumhealing.com. It's kind of being created on the fly with feedback from, from people who join our community. And then at some point, maybe later on this year or next year, we'll pull the beta part of that testing. We'll, uh, you know, solid and firm up the class and then offer it as a regular class out there. But right now is a perfect opportunity to get in on our community and on board learning beyond quantum healing uh, for a really small fee, <laughs> a membership fee to our community, which is a directory and a support form. They live on two different URLs, but they are connected. You start by getting yourself listed on our directory. It's just 10 bucks a month. You know, it's a, it's a nice latte from Starbucks or half a pizza, um, something along those lines. And uh, that's step one. If you register with our directory, um, you will be invited to join our forum, which is a separate URL, but it all is matched up. And we even have the 30 day free trial, but check out our directory listing, quantumhealingpractitioners.com. It's a worldwide listing of healers all across the planet. And on the front page, you can set parameters. So as an example, you could say, you know, I really want to find a medium who my mom can go to in New York City who speaks French. 
I mean, that's crazy. You can like put in those parameters and find somebody or find somebody online or find somebody in your locale. And that is our directory. We're making it bigger and better all the time. And our support forum has been supporting quantum healers. We started out supporting only Dolores Cannon students and practitioners, but we opened up our doors in la uh, late 2016, early 2017 to healers of all kinds, because we think all of you out there, quantum healers, um, who are in service to others in that way. And one of the fun things about it is we get to share notes across modalities. We get to compare different concepts with each other. We make great friends. We have a great community and we get to swap sessions um, with each other like you and Lauren did and like I do every chance I can. It's a really great place to, um, to be. So join us. And I, you can find here, I wrote it down to make sure. You can find Allison at soulfocushypnosis.com. And that's soulfocus with a hyphen and then hypnosis.com. And she is in Portland, Oregon. Of course, she has a fabulous YouTube channel. Go subscribe there if you haven't already. And please go and subscribe to Quantum Healing and Beyond, our YouTube channel. We kind of had to start over a little while ago. And, and we would love to have you subscribe and listen to more wonderful conversations like this with quantum healers around the world. One more thanks out to Greg Prescott at n5d.com for sponsoring this show. And after all of that, I want to get back to Allison Co. I've looked so forward to this show with you over the last several weeks. It's been great spending time with you. Love your energy. Thank you for being part of our community and for assisting humanity and planet in the way that you do. You're so beautiful. I love to be able to call you my friend and fellow colleague. Oh man, thank you, Candice. Thanks for having me on. You are a constant inspiration to me and my fellow practitioners. You know, you are constantly expanding in love and evolving in love. You know, you, you don't just, I don't know how you fit everything that you do. I don't know how you fit it in a day. I absolutely do not know how you do that. You, you are amazing. And after this, you have a, you have a show with Pamela Erilyn too, don't you? And, and uh, who's, an, who's an amazing medium. If you guys don't know who she is, uh, she is absolutely wonderful. She channels people. I think she's doing a channeling of, of Dolores Cannon and that's what you were gonna do after this. Year. So, so you, are, you do so much and so much for the community. And like you said, the, this, um, this platform that you've created um, and it, it is beautiful is absolutely beautiful the, the you know people come to these sessions and they they have no one no one to bounce their experiences off of or their ideas off of and you are creating a platform where we do that on a from you know us as a co-workers kind of spread all over the world we're we're like bouncing ideas off of each other or experiences and that's so it's so huge it is so huge it's so healing and um and so I want that for everybody. And you offered that to us. And, and thank you always for that. I, would, I, I, don't, I don't know where I would be without, without your forum, honestly. So, so it's, it's something I use every day, every day. So, and people, people come to me every day from, from your forum as well. So thank you for doing that. You, you connect all of us. And I just want to tell everybody who, um, I, I had put a video up yesterday telling people to come and, and, and listen to the show. I thought we were also going to do a live um, question and answer thing. And, and uh, we didn't get around to that. And I just want to tell everybody, I'm so sorry about that. You can, you can, you can actually, um, you know, send your questions to me and I'll try to try to answer them um, outside or of ask, this. And ask them in the chat. You know, I've been watching the chat go over here on my other computer. There were so many of them. They were just going like this. Oh, and there's a lot of, of, of talk and everything. I was just kind of like, oh my God. And again, this is my first YouTube live. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know that it, so, uh, you need a third person to talk to right? you and answer questions. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm willing to, and I know Allison probably is too, leave your questions in the chat. We'll get to them that way or join yeah. us again. What do you think, Allison? Would that be all right? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, but Candice, thank you for having me on. Thank you so much. I so enjoy spending any time with you and thank you for the amazing work that you do. Thank you, Greg Prescott, for, for supporting this and supporting Candice's work and my work and everybody, all that you do. And thank you to all of the people out there who are listening to this or who will, who will take this information and use it. Oh my gosh, you are so needed. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be alive. <laughs> well, let's do this again, okay? And and since we, you know, since I've gotten my feet wet with your YouTube audience in this way, we will dedicate, um, you know, heck, maybe we'll do a just question and answer only show. How about that? Would you like to do that? Won't even talk, just question and answer with Allison Co. and Candace. I'm happy to set that up for you, um, with you, if it sounds like something you might want to do. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Absolutely. Okay. So all you people out there who are looking for the q and uh, I'm going to hit the end meeting button, but I'm going to keep Allison on the line and uh, we'll set up the next time and we'll post all of that right here on the show underneath the credits and the links when I get that up. Okay. So, awesome. Thank everyone. you, Candice. Thank you, darling. It was so Bye, much everybody. fun. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.